Welcome to the 15 minutes hands-on of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra Reveal Phone <laughs> names I'm never joking, this is the thing that they passed me when I did test this one. And by the way, if you um want to go and test drive this phone It's up to September 31st I believe Or it's the end of October August. I'll link it down in the description below just in case you want to try it By the way, this applies to Singapore only As I heard Let's get started First thing about the Galaxy Note 20 is definitely the colors. Now, over here on the Note 20 Ultra, we have three different colors to choose from. Mystic Bronze, Mystic Black, and Mystic White. On the Note 20, however, we replace the Mystic White with a Mystic Green. Personally, I like the Mystic White on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, and the Mystic Green on the Galaxy Note 20. But again, both, uh, both the Black and the bronze, they are all really good colors. Not to lie, I really love the matte. And apparently, I can't really find any Note Twenties in different colors. That's why I don't really know if they are matte or not. But I'll leave that to other reviewers to judge on that one. Now I'm gonna clear the air on the Galaxy Note Twenty Ultra first before I go on to the Note Twenties display. Display-wise, the Note Twenty Ultra sports a 1440p OLED panel. Um, it is basically OLED that is curved. It's kind of like the Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge style thingy where the S7 Edge is bigger than the regular S7. This is a flat screen on. And also, it does have 120Hz. Now, during my testing period, I really didn't notice the 120Hz display. It's because of its LTPO technology. It sounds very, very beautiful. Where, in fact, this is a very efficient old LED. So for example, if you are just having it as an always on display, I'm pretty sure the screen refreshes 1 hertz per second which means it saves battery life. Now if you are scrolling or playing games or doing whatever, the screen automatically goes up to 120 hertz. So just came in so we're just gonna uh, continue what I'm just trying to say. So for people who are not into, who are not much into the technology community, I'm gonna explain to you all about 60 and 120 hertz. For people inside the tech communi community who knows everything about this first, you all can skip through this section. So let's start with hertz. What is hertz? Hertz is basically how your phone screen refreshes. The more frames it is, the smoother the phone screen will look. So definitely something that the iPhones have been lacking, it refreshes 60 frames per second which makes it look smooth but still not that smooth. I don't even know how to explain myself but it doesn't look that smooth but it looks smooth to maybe, it looks smooth to the, la to the naked eye. However, 120Hz display, it makes it look smoother in that case. So if you think that maybe the 60Hz is smooth, once you pay proper attention to a phone with 120Hz display, I don't have any 120Hz uh, phones right with me because apparently, I mean, we are all broke, so a sub of this channel will be greatly appreciated. And go over the KFL. 120Hz display means that all your contents don't look choppy. For example, if you take a look at a 60Hz display, your contents will automatically look a little bit more choppier than the 120Hz ones which refreshes like seriously godly I don't know what top tier, god tier of all the displays basically so what it does is that it makes your content smoother and it does ease off your eyes easier due to the fact that your 60Hz pan is not a 60Hz panel where it just refreshes really slowly compared to 120Hz since I can't feel it, I'm gonna tell you all my preference between the 120Hz and 1440p Personally, I will go with 1440p. Don't judge. Uh, don't go down to the comments right now because I'm gonna explain why, and also why I will pick 120 hertz. Reason number one: 1440p. As a person who edits on phones, as you can tell from this crappy content, again. So basically, 
1440p it gives me this small little detail i might not be able to tell a difference but judging from how i use my s7 it's always been in 1440p so i do notice those little small details that um probably some people won't notice at all but 120 hertz let's talk about it 120 hertz probably 90 percent of all of you can see straight away that it's 120 hertz it's playful i personally don't notice it because of maybe the variable refresh rate but it is really like it doesn't feel as choppy as my galaxy a30s which is a 60 hertz refresh rate or maybe the galaxy s7 so between both of them i'll just sit on a fence if samsung allows 1440p and 120 hertz i think it is going to be a very good idea too because why not we have why don't we have the best of both worlds? If y'all did notice something of the Galaxy Note's differentiating factors against other Android phones, what do you notice? Obviously, it's going to be the Galaxy S Pen. It's good. Also known as the S Pen. Basically, I'm wasting my time over here. And from last year's Galaxy Note 10, they've added a lot more features for work purpose. For those people who are probably in the meeting or maybe Zoom, I mean nowadays due to the pandemic, we have to wear on this stupid thing called as a MASK mask. For those of you who don't understand this, you probably haven't went out once or you probably didn't So, S Pen. What exactly it is? It is a pen for the Samsung phones and it's only proprietary to Samsung phones. This thing now have a very big improvement over last year's Galaxy Note 10 and it is definitely the milliseconds uh, the screen the screen and the pen's millisecond re uh, response rate or whatever they call it that thing can rival the iPad's uh, 9 millisecond also the same as the Note 20 Ultra however on the regular Note 20 as I tested out the live demo unit that thing does have a respectable uh, refresh rate not really refresh rate as in the touch response rate between the S Pen and the display itself it is not noticeable but again numbers placebo effect and to anybody who do use a note phone I haven't tested this out yet I have a Galaxy Note 3 S Pen and I hope it works with the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra I mean I didn't really try that out because I am not the shameless number one actually I am very shameless and number two I have tried it out I've tried a Galaxy Note 3 pen on a Galaxy Note 8, I think, and it did work flawlessly. So I guess Note series pens are interchangeable in that case that you all can use any Note series pen with any Galaxy Notes. So definitely something to look out for. Now, let's talk about the most interesting part of everything, the most controversial part. If you all remember that uh, Samsung with the S20 Ultra and the S20 Ultra, basically both very different phones, but they are all the same phones. With the Exynos 990 and the Snapdragon 865, um, it's weird, judging from the fact that Samsung used to be number one in making chips, as in they have been making really good chips for their whole life, and um, they just basically ruin it with the Exynos 990. Now, ask yourself this, okay? A phone is built to <laughs> to call people, okay? It's built to call people. That's why Motorola Dynatec looks like a proper phone. That's why all the older phones have just a keypad. Newer phones have touchscreen, yes, correct. But phones are still phones and phones are supposed to be used to call people. That brings me to the next point. Do you really need Snapdragon 865 Plus to call someone? You don't need all that power. You don't need those. Do you even need Exynos 990's all like all the power to just call someone? No, I don't think so. You probably need like maybe one megabyte of RAM to just call someone or I don't know something else. I need some scientific people or more professional people to prove my point on this one. But definitely, you don't need a fast chip to do the calling for you. You just need a pretty average chip. Maybe the slowest of the slowest should do the job also. Not should, it will do the job. 
But here's the thing. If you all think that the Exynos 990 cheap and the Snapdragon 865 Plus cheap, if you all think that they, they have a huge gap, and I'm here to tell you that, no, none of them have a huge gap. Now the difference between um, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, Snapdragon, and the Exynos variant, very little. That's what I'm gonna say, except for the battery life so far. So battery life on the Note 20 Ultra, uh, Exynos 990, it's been quite okay, judging by how the uh, person who came to my house uh, to allow me to test drive the Galaxy Note. So, when it came in, it's at 56%, and when it came out, it's at 55 and it's around a 10 minute cost. So, around the same uh, battery life as my Galaxy A30s, which is super impressive, judging from the fact that it is a very good display. It's like probably 1080p, 120 FPS. I haven't really uh, seen it. 120 120Hz. I haven't really seen the settings of it, so not too sure about that one, but I believe it is on the 120Hz display right over there. Because you paid for it, might as well use it. And um, the only difference that I really noticed between the Snapdragon and the Exynos, as many other YouTubers are thinking of it, because again, this is called as the placebo effect. Basically, placebo effect stands that if you have maybe a pip, a graph to show that the Exynos is worse than Snapdragon, you automatically think that the Exynos is really worse than a, than a Snapdragon. Now actually, they are pretty on power with, uh, they are on power with the speed and you won't even notice that small little speed difference in day-to-day -day usage. Again, a phone should do everything it can do. It shouldn't be that fast to make a phone call. It shouldn't be that fast to, for example, edit a video. I am using a mid-range phone to edit a video and it still turned out okay. Just like my S7, it still turns out okay. But again, battery life is a big issue on Exynos phones and I hope Samsung fix that with their Exynos 1000 or whatever is that, where they are working with AMD or I forgot what. Oh yeah, it is AMD, I'm sorry. Now the screen. 6.9 inch, that is a big, and I mean big, phone. I mean, okay, let's be fair. One UI 2 is definitely optimized for phones that are that big. It is like holding a whole iPad mini. This is not an iPad. It's like holding a whole iPad mini onto your freaking face, and that is how big it is. Provided the fact that this is a very heavy phone too. And, um... If you drop it, I will get it. Um, I will just cover it for the next chapter later on in this video. So do stay alive during this whole video. Due to the fact that uh, this is a big screen, I don't find it comfortable to use it day to day. But again, phones are getting bigger to accommodate for 5G, bigger battery, more and more features. So definitely something to look out on if you all have small hands like me. Personally, I have been struggling to use my A30s one-handed because of how big it is. My S7, however, I'm still struggling to uh, use it, so you can tell. Can't reach all the corners. Um, again, camera-wise, I mean battery-wise, I would still recommend y'all to go for the 865 variant. Still very excellent on the Exynos though. Y'all probably will get through a day before charging it again. I believe that's what most people buying this type of phones should do and plus it's a $2,000 phone, near $2,000 it's like 1898 uh, SGD and it's like what? $1,200 in the US seriously ridiculous but again it's just a phone and it's probably a phone for people who works like crazy people who love to draw on a phone people who edit on a phone for the camera if you remember the Galaxy S20 Ultra that thing have too many issues with focusing, with camera lens breaking, blah blah blah. This phone basically fixed out, I think, most of the issues. So we have a fast autofocus uh, mode. I didn't really take that clip down, so I didn't really take that clip. So sorry for not doing that. Um, and number one, like the first thing that I realized is this thing focus really really quick, and I don't mean by the word quick only is probably a lightning fast sort of action because of the laser focusing. However, on the Note 20, 
I don't find the difference between the laser autofocusing and the normal autofocusing on the Note 20. It is equally as fast as the Note 20 Ultra, but I'm pretty sure the laser one would do better in terms of low light situation and maybe light side mode or something like that. The phone also unlocks with your fingerprint, ultrasonic, and face ID or face scanning technology. Ultrasonic uh, fingerprint, te fingerprint sensing technology is definitely one of the fastest I have ever seen being unlocked. My personal phone itself, the Galaxy A30s, does have the optical fingerprint unlocking. It is slow, buggy, and whatever. The ultrasonic ones though, you just need to tap on it lightly and it will just unlock. I have tried it before and it is freaking amazing. For design and durability wise, I love it, but I really want to get the Galaxy Note 10 Aura Glow back because that is the color that seriously, it's literally a fox spirit. If y'all don't know why is that, um, it's in Chinese, it's known as Hu Li Jing. Hu Li Jing, Basically what it means is that it is there to seduce you into buying the phone or something like that. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like it matte, I like it's bronze, I like every single color it, come out, it comes out with, but imagine matte, matte with Aura Glow. That would be amazing, right? Durability wise, Gorilla Glass Victors got you covered. I did ask the person about it and they said that it will come with a, uh, a free case in the box, so better if you cover it up with a free case, but if you are someone who love to take your phone without a case like me, I mean, I'll put it on once I go outside. Please do cover it up with a case because the mat is seriously, seriously slippery. Now, as for the Note 20, I'm not going to uh, talk too much about it. It's basically a Note 20 Ultra and a Galaxy A71 5G had sex together to form this beautiful little abomination. I don't know what you'll call it, but I really love this phone. Number one, smaller screen, 6.7 inch. Number two, I love how it kept its boxy style with a little bit of the rounded edge. It makes it look more, uh, it makes it look more seductive in that way. Number three, the green, that one is amazing. But again, uh, we don't have micro SD card expansion, which is really really sad. I really wish Samsung continued that. Wireless charging is there, thank goodness. I hope they don't remove that on the future Note series. This future smaller note series, otherwise I'll freaking kill people. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but if this is a note and you're giving people features for less, for example, no SD card expansion, the note is supposed to be the king of Android. And you're removing one killer feature of many and of what many Android phones don't have. I don't want to call that a note anymore. It's probably gonna be an A81. I can see myself holding on to the Note 20 for probably 3 years because of how pretty it is and how the phone performs like the bigger brother, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G. Now, due to the fact that we, I am living in Singapore, we will only get 5G connectivity till 2025. So, it will be maybe 5 years of owning the phone before you can finally turn on 5G for the first time in your whole life right here in Singapore. Now for this part, which is going to be my second final verdict of both of this phone. I have to take a picture down on what I think of this uh, phone Ooh. because mm. I really can't remember all the things that I personally like and dislike. Number one, let's go ahead and end this off with the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is a big phone and it's the king of Android so far. Comparing to my A30s to this thing, aka the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, it's like comparing a munchkin cat to a Maine Coon. It is that big, alright? Or for dog lovers, it's like comparing a Chihuahua to a Golden Retriever. That is how big it is. The loss of the headset jack uh, won't bother me since I can wireless charge while using the charging port to listen to my music. I do have a wireless charger right over here to prove to y'all my point. But if y'all don't have one, go with Samsung's ecosystem, which is to go with the Galaxy Buds Live to rock with your Galaxy Note 20 Ultra or your Galaxy Note 20. Next, the S Pen is slender and small and mighty. 
in the awkward position, you see every single node, they all have been in this same right position, whereas this node, whereas the node this year moved to the left. Weird, don't know why, and it's also my habit to slot it in from the right, so I did almost push the pen into the aluminum frame where you're not supposed to do that, so quickly realized my mistake and popped it straight into its the left side, which is the correct side. Overall, this phone, whether the Note 20 or the Note 20 Ultra, it applies to both, is the first sign of a small compact computer, and that's what I never thought I needed. And this is why Apple managed to kick off the whole thing with the touchscreen phones. It's because they created something that consumer, consumers never thought they needed. And that is exactly what Samsung is doing right now, creating a small computer that nobody thought they need. And geez, this thing have more RAM than a computer. I'm not even joking. That's it. Thank you all so much for watching. A like, a sub will definitely mean a lot to me. And trust me, it does mean a lot to me. Now I'm trying to get to 100 by the end of this year. And I'm trying to also kickstart my friend's channel, I mean me and my friend's channel over on QFL. So go ahead, go over there, show some love to my friends and me and myself. But I'm telling you to stay over here, don't unsubscribe here, please. <laughs> we, are this, we are basically a team of friends who just came out with this idea of creating a YouTube channel to prove that friends, no matter who we are, are there together forever. Every like, sub and comment is highly appreciated. Now here are my final verdicts and these are the scores of both of these phones.